three, two, one. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Becky and I do true crime videos. Um, today's case is really, really heartbreaking and honestly frustrating. If you don't know, I live in Scotland and I had never heard of this case. It was actually my mom that told me about it. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Moira Anderson. It is one of Scotland's longest missing persons and unsolved murders. Without further ado, I will put up all the trigger warnings and I hope everybody is staying happy, safe, and healthy. Moira Anderson was reported missing 66 years ago after failing to return home from her local shop. The disappearance of Moira Anderson marks one of the longest missing persons and unsolved mysteries in Scottish criminal history. Today, whilst I'm filming, actually marks her 66th year anniversary of her disappearance. Moira Anderson was an 11-year-old schoolgirl who went missing on the 23rd of February in 1957. She was a bright, bubbly 11-year-old girl. She was a slight girl with, with fair hair and blue eyes. Moira lived in Cope Bridge, North Lanarkshire, which is in Scotland. Her home was Cliftonville. Moira's dad was from the local area, whilst her mom came from Fife. Moira was one of three girls. Her older sister was Janet, and she had a younger sister, Marjorie. All were very loved and close to the extended family. Moira was never regarded by anyone who knew her as a troubled runaway. She was looking forward to starting high school. However, Rumours circulated at the time of her disappearance, alleging that she was a handful and had run off to London. There was absolutely no truth to these rumours. On Saturday, February 23rd, 1957, six weeks before her 12th birthday, Moira left her grandmother's house in Cope Bridge in blizzard-like conditions to go to her local co-op to buy butter and a birthday card for her mother. Her gran, who lived nearby Murray Hall Street, was extremely unwell. Moira's Uncle Jim sent Moira to the Lard Street Co-op, just yards from her own home. However, when she arrived at the co-op, it had shut early due to the snowstorm. For years, the co-op staff denied that they had shut early. However, Police Scotland discovered just a few years ago that this was a lie. I wonder why they lied about this, because it's such an odd thing to lie about. Moira was seen waiting for a local Baxter's bus, which she got on instead of going back to her grandmother's. She was due to meet up with her cousin to, to go to the Regal's 5pm film show in the town centre of Cope Bridge. She never made it to the film show and never returned home. She was reported missing at midnight by desperate family members. A town-wide search began for the 11-year-old, but unfortunately, her family never saw her again. When was Moira Anderson last seen? The bus ride is important, as it was one of the few vehicles on the road due to the extreme weather conditions, and it was being driven by Alexander Garshwar. He was out on bail for offenses relating to a girl of Moira's age who had been a babysitter for his own children. He had been allowed to return to his job whilst waiting trial. Gartshore had long been suspected of being a flasher at local parks in Cope Bridge. It has also been revealed that he told his family that he was sexually attracted to young girls and allegedly to Moira in particular. Moira had absolutely no idea how dangerous this man was. However, she was fairly familiar with him as he drove the route which passed her own front door regularly. The area surrounding the bus route was described as a mining zone and there were spots where a body could have been concealed. And there was also links with other places that Gartshore was known to have been. Gartshore remains the last person to have seen Moira alive. However, 
He was not interviewed at the time of Moira's disappearance. Neither was Moira's best friend, Elizabeth, who had been playing with Moira just before she went to the co-op and before the snow worsened. In April 1957, Gartshore was finally found guilty and sentenced for the prior offence against the babysitter. However, by that time, Moira had already been missing for several months. The BBC was only asked by the police to put Moira's picture on television in May, and her parents had to fight for this to happen. The police at the time never suspected Alexander Gartshore in connection to the disappearance. This only came to interest when his daughter, Sandra Brown, approached the authorities in 1992. Following a conversation with Gartshore that convinced Sandra of his involvement. Before we go on, I just want to make a wee comment that Sandra Brown is truly amazing. She just never stopped. And in 2000, she founded the Moira Anderson Foundation, which is a child sexual abuse charity. Sandra, along with Moira's sisters, have worked so hard to keep Moira's memory alive. Two years after Moira's disappearance, Gartshore essayed Janet, and the police never did anything about it. Gartshore was then interviewed in Leeds, England, on suspicion of murder, and also relating to charges of sexual abuse concerning Sandra's cousins. The procurator fiscal decided to drop these charges in disinterest in bringing Gartshore, who was in his 70s, to Scotland to face any further questioning. Police eventually concluded that there was not enough evidence to convict him, despite Gartshore placing Moira on his bus. Unfortunately, Gartshore passed away in 2006, aged 85, before a solid case could be formed. Sandra insisted that a terrible miscarriage of justice had occurred and stressed that the original police investigation had been fatally flawed. She also stated that her father had been a pedophile and allegedly a part of an organized ring. Sandra questioned the authorities to why Moira was still technically a missing person, which meant that the proper resources had never been given to her case. Due to Sandra's persistent questioning, in 2012, Moira's case was finally upgraded to a murder inquiry. Allegedly, Jim, who was Gertshore's cousin, said, It must be nearly 50 years since my own father told me, in confidence, that his brother-in-law, Sandy Gartshore, had told him that his son, which was Alexander Gartshore, was responsible for the disappearance of Moira Anderson. He said he never brought his son, Alexander Gartshore, to the police due to what it would have done to Gartshore's wife, and it would have never brought Moira back. Jim said, I felt it wasn't my secret to share for many years, and I don't know where her body was hidden, so to some extent, I didn't feel I could do much to help. My dad would have never shared this with me if it wasn't true. I've told police what I know, and I want her to be found so that she can be laid to rest. Sandra replied to this and said, It was a bit of a shock to learn this, and I've spoken to Jim now a few times. I knew my grandfather suspected my father and challenged him when no one else had, but I never knew he had gotten a confession from him. I'm sad that he didn't use this information to make sure Moira and her family got justice. Several investigations into Moira's death have been completed over the years. In 2013, graves in the old Monkland Cemetery were exhumed in the attempt to find the remains of Moira. Specialist teams believed that Garshore may have buried Moira's body in the grave of his friend Sinclair Upton. The search proved unsuccessful. However, the nationwide media coverage brought forth new witnesses who had previously been unaware of the case. One claimed that the summer before Moira's disappearance, Gartshore had exposed himself to her and Moira in a local park and called Moira by her name. Witnesses also said 
the day sighted a bus similar to the one that Moira had boarded parked on a narrow country lane running adjacent to a cattle farm near a group of trees. The vehicle's lights were off and the driver was nowhere to be seen. By the morning, the bus was gone. It is believed this bus sighting was reported at the time, but was overlooked by cops during the investigation. Another witness stated that they had seen a man dragging a young girl by the arms near a bus terminal on the late afternoon of February 23rd, 1957. The witness said that the girl looked like Moira, and they later identified the man as Gartshore. In 2014, the Scottish Crown Office issued a statement that said, Had he still been alive, Alexander Gartshore would have been indicted for the abduction and murder of Moira Anderson in 1957. Moira's case is still ongoing, and it is being investigated by the Cold Case Unit of Police Scotland, and there have been several breakthroughs in Moira's case even recently. Publicity has produced more witnesses with credible evidence. Forensic soil scientist Professor Lorna Dawson, who was brought in by the police to help identify new locations, believes that Moira's remains could finally be discovered. Professor Dawson has highlighted the Witchwood area of Colt Bridge as a site worthy of exploration, but police said that there were no plans for another search unless more new information came to light. There is certainly intelligence and physical information on the ground that would suggest there is at least two other locations that could be treated as a priority. Sandra remains convinced that her father was responsible for the death of Moira Anderson. Sandra released a book called Where There Is Evil, which outlined her suspicions that her father had killed Moira. Moira's sister, Janet Hart, returned home from Sydney for the first time in 16 years to mark the 60th anniversary of Moira's disappearance. Janet, who named her daughter Moira, said, I still think about her every day. I pray each night that she's found, and I still have nightmares. It's something I have to do. All we want is closure. If you know anything, please speak up. There will be information on who to contact in the description. I really, really hope that this family can receive justice and Moira can finally be laid to rest. That is the end of today's video. I hope everybody is staying happy, safe, and healthy. If you want to educate yourself or others, please look at the links in the description. See you next week. Bye!